Hello everyone and welcome back to the Airfix YouTube channel. In this video we're going to build and paint a slightly different subject and we're going to take on a hypercar. In this case it's the 143rd scale Pagani Huayra starter set from Airfix. This is another one of the new starter sets which has been specifically designed to have a reduced parts count and an improved build sequence making it the ideal way to get started in the hobby. And because it's a starter set it also includes poly cement, a paintbrush and four acrylic paints to paint the kit. On the back of the box you'll find full colour diagrams which detail the use of the four supplied paints, with each part of the car given its own colour call out. The small red boxes tell you where to place the transfers from the small supplied transfer sheet to apply the markings. Inside the box you'll find two frames of injection moulded blue plastic, a one piece body shell and in its own separate bag a clear part for the windows windscreen and rear windscreen. In a small bag you'll find the four acrylic paints and the tube of poly cement to glue the kit together and of course we have the ubiquitous Humbrol Airfix paintbrush to paint the model. There's a detailed instruction guide which covers the full construction process and this needs to be carefully followed in the correct sequence as there are many areas that won't be accessible once you've proceeded with the build. There's also a small sheet of transfers which include all of the car's badges and the screen for the dashboard. To put the kit together we're going to be using the Humbrol Modeler's tool set which is a small set of basic tools with everything you need to get started in the hobby. It includes a file, some tweezers, some cutters for removing parts from the sprue and a modelling knife. This is basically everything you need to get going. Each of the two frames is lettered and this is moulded into the long rectangular tab located in the middle of each frame. Next to the parts themselves you'll find a small square tab with the full part number moulded in for ease of identification. The parts you require for each step can be found in the round callouts in the instruction guide. If you're not going to be using any primer on your model then a wash with warm soapy water will remove any surface contamination from the plastic and this may help with the adhesion of your paint when you paint the kit. We're going to prepare our model with a quick coat of Humbrol's acrylic spray primer. We've put some cardboard down to protect the bench and we're lucky enough to have extraction so we can spray indoors. If you don't have this at home then you may want to do this outside. The frames have been mounted to some sticks so we can turn them around without touching the surface while the paint is wet and we're just going to give the acrylic primer a quick spray test onto the cardboard just to get used to the spray pattern and gauge how fast the primer comes out of the can. We're priming all of the parts while they're still on the frame because there are a lot of small components which may get lost if we try to mount them all on separate pieces of cardboard and also we want to keep them near the part number so that we can follow the instructions carefully. The primer was applied first directly onto both sides and then we turned the frame slightly to get into all of the different nooks and crannies anywhere where we could see blue plastic. By keeping them on the sticks we were able to do this quickly and without risking any fingerprints by touching the wet paint. We repeated the same process on the second frame just making sure that everything's covered with a nice layer of primer. The body shell was also primed and then allowed to dry fully. Once everything was dry we had a surface which is nice and smooth and ready to accept the paints from the kit. To remove the parts from the frame we used the cutters from the Humbrol tool set and we cut well away from the surface of the parts. This leaves a small amount of excess plastic which then needs to be trimmed away with the modelling knife. This makes sure there's no damage from the cutters on the surface of the model components Although it does reveal a small bit of blue plastic where the primer has been cut away, this can be covered easily when we paint the model. With all of the excess plastic removed first with the model knife, we can then switch to the file and get rid of any leftovers, making sure that we have a nice clean surface that won't interfere with the fit of the parts. To glue the kit together we're going to use the supplied Humbrol Poly Cement. This comes in a metal tube which does have quite a broad nozzle, and controlling this glue can be challenging for the newer modeler. To give us a bit more control over the glue, what we're going to do is cut a corner from the starter set box and this will form an applicator. We're then going to cut one of the flaps from the box lid to form a pallet onto which we'll apply the poly cement before transferring the glue to the model. A quick test fit of the parts is carried out to make sure that they fit together well 
But because poly cement works by melting plastic, we do need to get rid of some of the primer to allow the glue to get down there and do its work. We're just using the model knife to scratch the primer away from the surface on both of the mating edges where the parts are going to fit together. And then we can use the applicator to transfer some poly cement from the pallet onto the model parts. Because we've scratched the primer away, this will now melt the plastic of the parts underneath and we can press the two edges together to form a bond. It takes a few seconds for the glue to do its work, so we'll set this aside to dry fully, and while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step, removing the interior from the frame. The interior is a single piece tub, and we'll repeat the cleanup process, snipping it away from the frame with the cutters, before removing the excess plastic with the modeling knife, and then cleaning everything up with the file to make sure that there's no interference with the fit of the parts. With the assemblies from stages 1 and 2 of the instructions ready, we need to paint them before we can glue them together. The first colour we'll use is number 33 for the underside of the car, and just remember that these paints could have been sitting for some time before you bought the kit, so give the paint a good stir before you use it to get it nice and smooth again. We transferred some of the number 33 to our palette, and then diluted it with a bit of ordinary tap water. This ratio was about 60% paint, 40% water. Thinning the paint in this fashion does mean we have to apply multiple layers to build up coverage, but by adding water it dries much smoother with no three-dimensional texture and gives a superior finish to using the paint straight from the pot. If you're having trouble painting over bare plastic and want to see how to paint the model without a primer, why not check out our E-Type Jaguar how-to video where we built that starter set painting directly onto the bare plastic without any primer. With the black paint set aside to dry, we took the number 14 paint from the kit, added it to our palette and diluted it with the same 60-40 ratio of water. This mixture was then brushed onto the interior sections of the car following the painting instructions in the instruction manual. We made sure to get the paint into all of the recessed details and rather than painting the whole thing blue, we left the engine detail in primer as this would be painted black in readiness for a coat of silver paint later on. We then set the interior aside to dry and repeated the application of black paint on the underside of the car. You can see that thanks to the preparation of the primer, we're able to get quite good coverage with one coat of paint and it should only take two or three coats to build up a really solid coverage of the matte black. We also started to paint under the wheel arches with the same mixture while we had it in the palette, and then we switched back to using the blue to give the interior another coat while the underside of the car was drying yet again. The next step was to take number 21, which is gloss black, thin it to the same 60-40 ratio, and then apply multiple thin coats to the rear bumper. The Pagani Hyra has got some pretty extreme styling, so there are lots of nooks and crannies to get into, so we had to make sure we achieved good coverage with our first coat in all of these recessed areas, before applying a second and third coat just to build up the gloss finish. Once the rear bumper was fully painted, this part was set aside to dry, and we quickly cleaned up the interior for the doors, using the same procedures we showed earlier in the video. Once these parts were cleaned up, we painted them with the remainder of the gloss black mixture that we'd used on the rear bumper. Because of the nature of car modelling, there's a lot more painting to do up front before you can really start assembling the kit, and you do need to build up a good coverage on these parts, as you're not going to be able to access them later to finish them off if they're not shiny enough. So we gave the interior for the doors three coats of gloss and set them aside to dry while we worked on the seats. The seats were painted with number 14 blue, but before they were painted we mounted them on the end of a stick to enable us to paint the whole piece without any risk of getting fingerprints in the paint. Two coats of number 14 were applied to the seats to get them nice and shiny, and then these were set aside to dry while we worked on the engine detail. The engine detail was first painted with number 33, which is matte black, and this would help get nice shine out of the silver paint later on, but also helped to build up full shadow and give the illusion of depth in the engine area. The silver paint was prepared in the usual fashion, and then the engine details were painted. It took about two coats to achieve good coverage, and that's thanks to the black base coat which had been applied earlier, 
and in some areas we didn't paint the entire detail with the silver and left some of the black paint showing through. A prime example of this is the two braces which cross over the top of the engine. This area is moulded as one solid piece, but by only painting the top portion of this detail, it gives the impression of empty space underneath and helps to build up a three dimensional look on the moulded detail. With a big portion of the painting completed, it was time to start with some assembly. As with the previous glue join that we showed, we had to remove some primer from the parts to make sure that the poly cement was in contact with plastic and then the poly cement was added using the applicator and palette that we showed at the beginning of the video. Using the front wheel arch as the alignment point, the interior was glued onto the floor of the car, and then held in place for a few seconds while the poly cement did its work. The primer was then cleaned up from the seat location points, and from the base of the seats themselves, before poly cement was added, and the seats were glued into position. Once the seats were glued into position, it was time to move on to painting the dashboard, ready to complete the interior assembly. To allow for easier painting of the dashboard, we mounted it on a small blob of white tack, just like we'd done with the seats, to allow us to move the parts hands-free without getting any fingerprints in the wet paint. The instruction manual calls out all of the different colours in the different areas on the dashboard, and we started with number 14, and built up a good couple of coats to get a nice gloss finish on these areas. Once the blue paint was dry, we switched to number 21 gloss black and painted the areas called out in this colour on the instructions. We also painted the middle of the centre console with this paint as an undercoat for the silver paint which was required later on. This would just help get better coverage with the silver, just like on the engine details. With the black paint allowed to dry fully, we went in to finish the painting of the dashboard with the silver paint. The only tricky area here are the small slivers of detail along the edges of the screen, but we just painted these in using very small strokes of the brush to minimise any potential mistakes. With the painting complete on the dashboard, it was time to apply the first of the transfers. These don't work like stickers, and instead need to be cut individually from the marking sheet, and then immersed in water for a few seconds before being allowed to soak. The water reactivates a special adhesive on the transfer sheet, which then allows the marking to slide free, which is when you know it's ready to apply. With a little bit of water added to the surface of the model, the marking can then be slid into position, and then pressed down with the tip of the brush to get rid of any air bubbles trapped underneath. Once the markings were added on the dashboard, we added the steering column, painted the dials, and painted the steering wheel, ready to finish the interior. It was time for some more assembly now, and we removed the paint and primer from the interior of the doors, and applied poly cement to the areas shown in yellow on the instruction manual before pressing these parts into position. The door interiors have small tabs moulded into the parts which provide a location point for the dashboard, so once both of the door interiors were added, the dashboard was glued into place, and we completed the assembly of the interior by adding the steering wheel. A small dab of poly cement was added, and then the steering wheel pushed into position, before carefully straightening it up to make sure everything looked nice and neat on the interior of the car. With the interior assembly completed, the same process of removing primer, adding poly cement and gluing parts into position was repeated for the rear wheel arches. At this point the model's looking kind of scruffy with a lot of visible primer, but you'll see that a quick test fit of the body shell shows that once the body shell's in position, only the finished areas that we've carefully painted will be visible, and the whole thing will look much neater. It's also important to do a test fit at this point to make sure that everything fits as it should, before proceeding with the next step. With a quick clean up to remove the primer, the front bumper was glued into position, and when we added the poly cement to this area, we focused it along the inside face of the car, so that the glue wouldn't squeeze out onto the surface of the model when the parts were pressed together. This was set aside to dry while we added gloss black to the air intakes and the edges of the rear bumper, which had been glued on with the rear wheel arches. While the first coat of paint was drying on those parts, we then went back to the front bumper and started to paint this area in gloss black as well. It was time to undertake the most important part of the model and paint the body shell. Because this is the most obviously visible part of the model, we wanted the paint to be as smooth as possible, so we diluted it with the same 60-40 ratio with ordinary tap water, and then built up the coverage 
in nice smooth layers, allowing it to dry between each coat. We followed the colour diagrams carefully to ensure we were painting the black paint into all the correct areas, and anything that looked a bit scruffy, we'd cover up later when we applied the blue paint. It took about four or five coats of paint to build up sufficient shine before we could move on to the next steps, and we also picked out any of the detailed areas such as the lights on the rear and front of the vehicle in black paint as well. Once all of the gloss black areas had been allowed to dry fully, we switched to number 14 blue and started to paint the rest of the body shell. We started at the rear of the vehicle and concentrated on getting a nice neat demarcation line between the two different colours. There's actually a small recess in this area which helps guide the paintbrush bristles, but this disappears near the windows so we had to do this area freehand and just worked our way slowly upwards towards the window opening, thinning the black paint down to a very slim line. This process will need to be repeated with each subsequent layer of blue paint that we apply, and to build up a good gloss finish we're going to need to apply about 4 layers of paint, but this does give us a good opportunity to clean away any scruffy areas that we may have left behind when we painted any of the black areas. Once the initial coat of blue paint was dry, we simply repeated the application to build up gloss coverage with the number 14 paint. At the start of each subsequent paint layer, we started at the colour change line and then moved down onto the rest of the vehicle. Once the body shell was completely dry, we painted the interior black to avoid any primer showing through and tidied up the front headlights to make sure the details were nice and neat. We moved over to the windscreen and applied number 33 matte black to the windscreen wiper working carefully with the tip of the brush to try and paint this detail in as sharply as possible. Any paint which had encroached on the windscreen was cleaned away with a sharp cocktail stick. Once all of the paint had fully cured on the body shell, we placed it on some tissue to prevent it getting scratched, and then applied poly cement to the locating tabs for the clear part. This was manoeuvred into position, and then to avoid getting fingerprints on the glass, we pressed it into its final location using a cotton bud. This allows us to put pressure on the clear part without leaving any fingerprints behind, and once the clear parts had been pushed right down into the body shell, the assembly of this part was complete, and we were able to move on to the final stages. The rear pillars are raised details which are moulded into the clear parts, so these were easy to pick out with a couple of coats of number 21 gloss black, before the final details were painted while the parts were still attached to the frame. The brake calipers were painted with number 14 to match the car body colour, and the brake discs were painted black ready to accept silver paint later on. The rest of the small parts were all number 21 gloss black, and these were all painted again on the frame, as this makes it easier to hold these small components and prevents them getting lost on the workbench. After painting the exhaust black to take silver paint, this was given two coats of silver just to make it nice and shiny, and then manoeuvred into position with a pair of tweezers after applying some poly cement to the locating tabs on the inside of the body shell. The brake discs were painted in silver and then left to dry, before poly cement was added to all the necessary glue locations as highlighted in yellow in the instruction manual. Once the poly cement was applied, the body shell was simply clicked into position, and then we used some tissue to prevent any marks being pressed into the paint or the windows while we held this together as the glue dried. This took a few seconds for the poly cement to grip, and then we set this aside to cure fully while we painted the alloy wheels. We mounted our wheels on cocktail sticks just to avoid getting any fingerprints in the paint, and then painted the whole assembly with matte black before picking out the wheel detail with silver. After the silver was applied, the matte black was then used to clean up the edges and make everything nice and neat. A small drop of poly cement was added right onto the end of the axles, and then the wheels were guided into place and pushed into position. All four wheels were added, and then we were on to the final stage in assembly, which was to add the rear view mirrors. Because we don't want to risk any accidents with the poly cement on our nicely painted body shell, We've cut an extra tiny applicator out of the kit box to put a bit of poly cement into the locating holes, and then it's simply a case of carefully guiding the mirrors into their final position. The finishing touch on this model was to apply the remaining markings in the same fashion that we showed you in the dashboard section of this video. They were soaked in water to get them to slide free of the backing paper, manoeuvred into position, 
and then a small piece of tissue was used to remove any excess moisture. Once all of the markings are applied, that's the Pagani Hira starter set complete. Building scale model cars is a fascinating genre of the wider scale modelling hobby, with its own set of techniques and challenges, but it can be difficult to figure out where to get started. By providing the starter sets with a reduced parts count and improved build sequence, Airfix hope to offer the perfect springboard into the hobby. By providing these videos, we also hope to provide inspiration and guidance for those who are just taking their first steps into the scale modelling world. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and joining us for some modelling today, and as always, we'll see you again next time.